Morning guys, how you all doing? All good I hope. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Nigel from the Norfolk Fishing Channel. Today, or this morning should I say, because <laughs> it's bloody early, we're out of Gorson Pier. It is five past one in the morning. I'm way ahead of schedule. I set the alarm for a quarter past one. Uh, I woke up and in my blurry eyed state, um, I thought it said five to one. So I got up. Had a wee, got changed, made myself a coffee, sat down, looked at the mobile, and went five past five past eleven. You're kidding me. So I thought, well, sorry, I ain't going back to bed now. So I thought, oh, well, well, I was going to sit there and have, have my coffee, and thought, well, I can sit and watch TV for a couple of hours and watch a bit of footy. Well, I'll just get myself out. So I thought, oh, sorry, it will come out. So I'm down here. I'm on the pier. It's uh, Monday the 24th of June. It's absolutely flat calm, very little wind, still about 16 degrees. I'm all set up. I've just literally cast in. I've, uh, I've got the, the Nafe Blue Ocean rod and I've got my Shakespeare Salt XT. That's with a pulley rig and I've just put a 3 0 Coxon Wall dongle on there with a big bit of mackerel and squid. And I've got a two up and one down on my other rod. Well, I'll show you all that later while it's uh, light. So there's no point doing much. I've come back here. I'll show you where the rods are. In the distance there. You know, I've slackened the clutch right off and then put a bungee on it. Full moon tonight. So... We're on the end of the pier, but um, what I thought I'd do is I'll fish on for a few hours till it gets light. If I get any fish, I'll bring it back here under the lights under the uh, <coughs> watchtower. I'll show you a fish or two if we get one, fingers crossed. Um, so I've got a big rod, hopefully for a doggy, smooth and ray or something, and a two of one down. Depending how the fishing's going, if it's quiet, I'll probably set up another rod, um, with three up, with the quick change links and a one down, and try and scratch the fish out. But at the minute, while it's dark, I don't want to um, have too much set up. It's low water this morning, at about five past five, ten past five. So that's why I originally wanted to set the alarm for about quarter past one and get down here for about three, the last couple of hours of the ebb and then be fishing it on the flood all day. So I've got four hours left of the ebb and then it'll be, uh, say, low water about five past, ten past five this morning. And then we'll be fishing it on the flood. So if I get any fish, I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, the rods are out. <clears throat> Dongle rig on this one, big bait. I've just put the bell and light clip just at the bottom there. They'll still get a bite, I can hear it rattling away. I don't want it near the tips. Just in case I get a fish. I don't like it on the end of the tip. It's definitely not for casting. But if I get a bite, I still hear it rattling away.
And we've got this one out as well. I've got five ounces on this, it's holding. I'll step that up to six ounces. I'm going to bring it in. I'm going to bring this one in, step it up to six ounces, and then I'm going to put lugworm and squid on the top two, and then just a bit of mackerel on the bottom. So I've been pictures a bit pants. But as I say, if I get a fish, I'll take it under the lights, you'll see it. And then uh, come about three o'clock, as the light starts cracking, then I'll probably pop a, you know, start filming properly. So the big rod I've got cast out where that slack water is or where the, the river's ebbing. I can find it. Just in this channel here you can see the water going up and that where that big round flat spot is. It's cast out there. And where I caught that dab, I've just literally, well that was quite far out on the same sort of line, but I thought, oh, while it's dark, I'm just gonna lob it about 10 yards and just drop it off the end of the pier just in case there's any sort of like patrolling bass or anything close in but let's give it one cast close in dropped it like 10 15 yards not too close because you know it's really snaggy down there but i'll give that about 15 minutes i mean it's literally sort of like off the edge here almost an underarm okay guys coming up to half two so it shouldn't have long till it starts <coughs> getting light. Nothing at the minute. I've just uh, brought both rods in. I stepped to the right hand one, the two up, one down to six ounces. That's holding nicely now. There's no bow in the bend on the rod. I brought the big rod in, rebaited that for a nice big bit of squid and mackerel. We've got a big slack liner. I looked up and the whole line had gone slack laying down. I wound down to it. There's nothing there, but the ledge has tripped out. So something's picked it up but we missed it wherever it was uh, I've just bought the two at one down in and I've baited it up with one piece of salted lug and squid on the top two and just a big plain bit of mackerel on the bottom I've got the uh, light clips on with the bell so uh, but we still got what was it, uh, two and a half hours it's ebbing now but it's, it's, it's ever so slight it's ever so slight it's manageable quite easy uh, but I've got the tips I bought these I don't know if you can see them probably not glowing in the distance they've got a bell on it I've just clipped it above the uh, butt eye just I'll still get if it's something takes it, I'll still hear the rattle and I'll, I'll see it, but I don't want to clip it to the end of the rod. Um, it's just too dangerous, I think. You know, especially for casting out, uh, no way. But um, yeah, it's just the pain putting it on the tip and sort of like trying to bring it in and take it off and all the rest of it. But uh, it's early days, we'll see how it goes. Um, I might set up the other rod in a minute and have a little bit of a bash about put a really light rig on, just tiny baits, and see if we can scratch anything out. But I'll get... Okay guys, three o'clock, the sun's coming up. Just had a little tremble on the uh, right hand one, the two up, one down. And a nice dab. Macula that is. Nice plump fish. Little red spots all over it. Go off the mark. Yeah, it's a lovely fish. But uh, strangely again, last couple of sessions, are getting them all on the bottom. That was the one below the lead, just on the straight mackerel. Nothing on the salted lug. But I keep getting a couple of knocks on the big rod, which is uh, encouraging. Twice now, we've got a big slack liner. 
So I might take the dongle rig off and uh, go for a panel. Um, just smaller hooks, to see if we can connect with something. But we'll get this one straight back, straight over the edge. You see the sun coming up there. straight back over the side the blanc. Ooh, we're off the mark up and running they weren't worth it. I was starting to panic so. right we're off the mark we're up and running let's get the rods back in Okay, I've just put that fish back, so I had a recast. I put mackerel on the bottom hook, mackerel and squid on the one above the lead, and salted lug and squid on the top. Well, I'll give that about 15 minutes down there. If nothing, I'll cast it back out long again. But it looks like it's gonna be another glorious day. But I'm glad I brought this body warmer with me. I was on an iron, I'm on an iron. I thought I went back to the house and grabbed it. And I thought I can just bung it in the car. But when I got down there, I thought I'll just take it with me. It weighs nothing, but I'm glad I did because that wind's a bit chilly. You always get it on the end of the pier here. How are you all doing anyway? What have you been up to much? Anyone be back out on the rivers? River Yare, River Fern, River Bure? Or any river really? How's it fishing? I must go, I must get out soon. Got the hood of bang then. I just like, um, I was just looking at the weather and the tides. I've got Monday, Tuesday off. I had nowhere, went nowhere to go, so I thought, oh, I'll just stick it in the random Wheel of Fortune that came out of the pier. So I thought, ah, oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'll come down here early Monday. It's light under the watchtower there. I'll grab a sort of night morning session. And then Tuesday's looking a bit brighter, brighter. No clouds and all the rest of it. A little bit sunnier and a bit warmer. So I thought, oh, that's another op opportunity to go out, give it the old spinning for bass along the uh, shore. But what I was thinking about Tuesday, I've never done it. I'm going to go a bit more North Norfolk, I think. Um, maybe sort of like Sal House and work the way up um up and down or to Weybourne or whatever and, and have a go along there but i bought um two pachenkos the other week and pff, don't know what i've done with them i bloody lost them man i what a twat <laughs> ten ten of a piece i don't know what the hell i've done with them. i've looked everywhere high and low um no the last time i had it was at um at overstrand so whether i've dropped it and whatever but yeah a bit pissed off because i bought a three or four now and everyone i've lost um everyone, i think i've just dropped three um when i was at when I was out my bag at um back to walcott instead of put it in my bag i put it in one of the side pockets dropped it one was on the cast and the other ones are just yeah mislaid again no never never the cheap laws never the dexter wedge or just a cheap no it's always the expensive ones i've lost so but I am planning sort of a river trip soon. Um, it's probably going to have to be the following Monday. But uh, I'll have to get my arse into gear. <laughs> and get some uh, maggots and casters. And start prepping some hemp and tears and that for the whip and bits and pieces. All right, I've got bucket loads of ground bait and, and all the rest of it. But uh, yeah, the river's calling now. But at the minute, I'm still in love with the sea fishing. I'm still in love with the beach fishing. I think it's my number one now, for whatever reason. It's just, it just is. Got a place in my heart at the minute. Yeah, it's about quarter past three. There's light enough to see. I'm going to give it ten minutes more on this rod. And nothing, and it's going to be back out long again. Okay, it's four o'clock, guys. Still had the one fish. You know what, while, while it's quiet, 
I've set up a third rod. It's just got a same straight two up and one down rig. It's got a five ounce lead on. That's just uh, the Nafe surf rod. It's telescopic. Uh, it's 13 foot or 14 foot. Shakespeare. Salt, 7,000 reel. 60 pound, pound ASIO shock leader. It's got 20 pound Shakespeare mono on there. The top two are size fours with a little few beads and bling on there. The bottom one is a 2 0 Aberdeen hook. And it's just got mackerel, fresh mackerel on all three. Just cast that medium distance. This one's a long, long range. And then the big bait's long range as well. So it's absolutely flat calm. Starting to warm up now. Did get chilly about three o'clock. But I'll have a bit of a play around with baits. The log worms keep getting stripped, but I'm not seeing the bite, so it's quite strange because this one I've got braid on it. And when I dropped it short, within, I only give it 10 minutes, brought up and the log worms are gone, so. Normally with the braid I can see everything, but didn't see any bites, whether they're crabs or something, I'm not sure. But we're out, we're fishing, it's a beautiful morning. we still got an hour, an hour and about 10 minutes till low water, and then we'll be back on the flood. And if it's about high tide, about 12 o'clock, I'll have a check. But as I say, tomorrow, uh, <clears throat> tomorrow I'm going to go spinning again for bass. And I'll probably go Salah, or Weybourne, and then have a walk along the shingle and just, uh, I'll have another route around for the Pachenkos, but, yeah, be a bit, I mean, the water's still a little bit coloured for maybe for surface laws, but we'll, we'll have a go, we'll have a go. I thought I saw some. No, no, it's just a surf. There's like a mill pond out there this morning. That tide's just slackening off now. I did pick up for an hour from about three to four. It's just starting to slacken off now. So it's obviously getting to the bottom of the tide. But this pier is all weird. The big rod is cast out into the channel, which is holding nicely. If I went to the left of that, it'd flick round into the river. The middle rod's now sort of drained to coming to the right. I've cast this one just to my right here, <clears throat> and that's laying dead straight, but you notice when you're looking at the, the water and, and where it rips around here, it, <clears throat> it goes in all directions. But see the doors? You may never know, might start coming back on the flood. And hopefully a few white in at low water. But I've got the option here, there's no one here at the minute. And that's why I thought I'd come down here early, spread myself out. <laughs> and uh, take up as much room as I possibly can. <clears throat> but I can go to the right and cast back over towards the beach. We haven't blanked, and that's the main thing. We haven't blanked. Any a little dab? But sometimes it's not about that as well. Yeah, if you've got a lot on your plate and you just want to get out, chill, relax, unwind, calm your mind. What a better place to be. And I think at the minute, as I say, with a lot of things going on with, you know, family, parent problems, health and stuff. And 
other situations, you know, work and that, and just stress, being by the sea, by the beach, you just slow down a little bit more, take in the surroundings, the scenery, and just chill. You know, sometimes when you're out on the river, and you know, as I say, I've always been brought up, as soon as I pretty much got into fishing and started the match scene, and I'm always working, working, working on the rivers, trying to get the maximum out of the peg. And it isn't, so, you know, sometimes you come home and if you had a bag up session, you're more knackered. <laughs> it's not really sort of relaxing, it's more, you know, mentally tiring. If you, you know, got three or four or five swims on the go and switching between lines and trying to maximise your peg and catch as much as you can, but it's not really a relaxing day. It's enjoyable, very enjoyable. Hard work, but it's not relaxing. Mm. I suppose you can do that when you get home and reflect on the rewards of your day. Now, there's somebody else who's just turned up. Looking like they're going to fish off the point bit. I expect a few people to turn out still in early doors yet, so. But I keep saying I want to go to the very end where the, the wall is. The fish off of there. Off from there where the beach is. And just cast directly out. I don't know, something about being on the end of the pier here and just looking straight out of the sea. It's been quiet and the sun's out. I've just been walking around the pier and quite disappointed really and you know you wonder why a lot of places get banned from fishing they close up because I've just been around. Yeah I've just been around the pier I've been picking a load of handfuls of line I've got more in the box we've got about three handfuls of line cut off bits Hooks, about six hooks, swivels, beads, law bits, blingy bits, and just as noticed over there, just sat on the right railings, which I'm going to dispose of. A bloody great knife, just left on the side of the railings. Litter everywhere, beer cans, 
and it's disappointing really you know it's a shame because it really does give angling a bad name um, you know you don't know kids walking along and anyone can pick this up but uh, I take it home and dispose of it safely but there's, there's all sorts on here there's just bits of line everywhere there's a good couple of leads are picked up and it's just yeah well we know who all the uh, culprits are but uh, it's a shame really because you've got a lovely place like this and it only takes one or two wildlife enthusiasts and bits and pieces you know if they see birds tethered up or just to put in a complaint and give you know put a stop to it all but yeah it's very quiet still still only the one fish so we'll muster on for another hour and then I'll probably call it quits but it's quite it's, it's been really strange I got here very little ebb been slack water for ages and now it's flooding really hard that's why I've moved and I don't know if it was a tote but this one here cast it out holding lovely for 10-15 minutes nice gentle bend on the rod and all of a sudden the rod tip slammed back I thought I had a big slack line I looked at the line the line had gone round the pier here they're wound in wound in wound I thought well this is light there's nothing on the whole rig had gone the whole rig was, all I got back was about an inch above the top uh, snood with the uh, leader knot and a swivel and it's like something had just come along and bit the line through it's really odd really odd whether it's a tope or something hit because I had mackerel on the top one so I don't know it's strange so hey, it's out for 15 15 minutes 20 minutes nice gentle bend on the rod tip and then it just flew back and then it was all gone very odd oh that's a great white shark <laughs> Okay, the tide's on the turn now, it's starting to flood, and boy was it a big flood, it came absolutely rushing in, I stepped up from 5 to 6, then to 7 ounces, and it was flooding into the river like I've never seen it before, and I looked on my phone, and it was a massive high tide, I know it's driving there, there's a full moon, it's a new moon, and it's a 5.18 metre high tide, um, I was just getting tripped out and bouncing around like a rag doll in a washing machine so I thought I'd put the rods down have a little break have a nice sandwich and I'm glad I made my focaccia garlic and rosemary and roast chicken sandwich a nice bit of butter and mayonnaise and a coffee but uh, well there's nothing biting I thought I might as well grab myself a bite I did get one fish, but uh, the tide was out strong. It pulled the rig round the pier, got sn snagged on the wooden board, and as it normally does, I followed the road round, got my gloves on, pulled for a break, I managed to snap the bottom, snood, got the rig back, but I lost the fish, so hey ho, that's the way it goes. Okay guys, I'm all done, back at the car, it's 10 o'clock, uh, <clears throat> that was a really big flood, really big flood, powerful, it was lashing into the river, we just looked on my phone, it's a 5.12 metre high tide today, so it's going to be a really big tide, a couple of times the lead tripped out and bounced around the pier, uh, just on the end there, I brought both rods in, just left the two up, one down rig on, it was slammed over, I connected to something, I think it was just a small doggy, I got, got it all the way back to the pier, but the tide was rushing round. I could see the top two snoods, something on the bottom one, but it got pulled underneath the bloody pier again. Snagged up, so I let the line go loose, followed it round the pier, put my gloves on, and just uh, grabbed the leader and pulled for it. Um, 
managed to break the hook link, lost whatever's on, but got the rig back. But yeah, just the one fish. <clears throat> but uh, oh, it's a totally different day here. You get back to the car behind the here out the wind, it's a totally different day. It's bloody boiling here, but that wind's fresh off the end of the pier. But just one dab, that's the way it goes. That's fishing for you. I suppose at the end of the day, um. We go fishing for the enjoyment, really, don't we? That's that's what it's all about. Going for the enjoyment factor. Day out, sit and relax and enjoy enjoy the day more than anything else. Fish is a bonus, but that's it, I'm afraid. Tight lines. Take care. All the best, and I'll see you in another video.